Hi, my name's Rowan and this is my channel, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. How are we all? I thought I would come on and do a little video. Now, I'm not going to say a quick video because I say that all the time, never is. So I'm going to know myself right now and I'm going to say it might be a long one. Who knows? I might uh, have that psychological thing where it's actually a short one because I've said that now. I've made the biggest mistake of telling my family that I'm doing a vlog. So the likelihood is you will hear all sorts of shouting, screaming, doors banging, tumble dryers on, that type of thing. So I just warn you. <laughs> um, I'd just like to quickly say thank you, actually. Um, reason being is I've most recently hit 8,000 subscribers. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock to me, actually. It's been a bit of a slow work in progress from seven to eight but um yeah i hit eight thousand a couple of weeks ago so thank you very much if you are subscribed and if you're not why not i mean get that button pressed <laughs> but yeah i can't believe it eight thousand of you and um, poor souls are watching me um on a regular basis so i just wanted to say thank you for every like comment subscribe it really does mean a lot to me so i know you're not gonna believe this when i say this but dun, dun, dun. i'm doing a makes video i know I can't even remember the last time I did one <laughs> but I've got too much to talk about really so I'm going to try and split it into a couple of vlogs maybe one now one in a few weeks time um because I have made quite a few bits but I don't think I've done a mates video maybe since last year I don't know I'm bad aren't I I can't help it Ugh. it takes such a lot of effort <laughs> but today is the day I'm all a bit dolled up I'm a little bit more dolled up than normal because I'm going out Going out with my mummy friends later into Leeds. Ooh, we're going for something to eat, lots of cocktails, and we're doing an escape room. But I'm a little bit scared because we're doing the escape room last. What is wrong with us? Uh, rather than do it first, get it out of the way, go have a meal and some drinks, we're doing it the other way around. So anything could happen. I mean, I'm probably going to be, you know, breaking my leg and being sat in a pot next time. But We'll see. Right, let's start. I've got, like I say, quite a lot, but I've picked out a few things just to talk through. Otherwise, I'm just never going to get there if I keep waiting to talk to you about it. So let's go with make number one. Oh, which is what I'm wearing. <laughs> this was a very quick make that I just randomly did this week. Yes, this week. So this is the, let me see if I've got a picture of it somewhere. I have, I swear to God, I'm organised, honest. As this is the Hazelwood Top by Tasuti Patterns and I love it. So I did not, this had not been on my radar at all. I love Tasuti Patterns, but um, I'd not really looked at this Hazelwood Top. But I was on Instagram and I was watching Vicky from Minerva talk about a load of their new um, fabrics that they'd got in their Minerva exclusive um, range. And she was wearing this Hazelwood Top in an animal print as well, a different animal print to this. <laughs> and I literally fell in love with it immediately and I knew it would suit my body shape. I knew it would suit what I like, my aesthetic. And I knew I had this fabric and that it had to happen. So I literally, as soon as I'd finished watching that Instagram, I went online, I ordered the pattern, I printed it off, I stuck it all together, cut it out, made it up, literally, which is unusual for me. I'm not normally that spontaneous. I'm normally kind of a plan it out kind of girl, but I loved it that much and I am so pleased with it. So this is a fabric that I did put on my plans video, I think in, I don't know, January or something. Um, and I, I couldn't work out what I wanted to make with it. And I ended up thinking I was going to make the South Bank sweater. And I've made the South Bank into a dress a couple of times, but I've never done the sweater version. So I was thinking I'm going to do that. But when I saw Vicky from Minerva knit, I was just like, oh. So yes, I'm going to put some photos in anyway, but I made it in this delicious fabric from Beyond the Pink Doll that I bought a few months ago. And ever since I bought it, um, I loved it that much. I didn't know what to make with it. So it was a bit precious really, but ha -ha, I'm so glad that I made it. So let me get my little sewing project book of dreams. I'd like to say that I'm keeping up to this all the time, but I've just madly written in it all of the makes that I've done recently. So that is not very good for my sew resolutions when I said that I was going to make sure I wrote in this all the time. Anyway, so this goes from sizes XXS to XL. So they haven't got the biggest 
um, range on some of their patterns, I must admit to Suti. Um, but I'll be putting all of the information on um, sizes and everything below here just so that you can have a look. But it is a swing type top. So there's quite a lot of, of giving it. So I should have been an XL, so the largest size all over. I mean, I'm only a size 16, so XL, you know what I mean? 16, it's average size of a woman, come on people. But anyway, um, I actually downsized because there was quite a lot of ease in the project. In the project? Who am I even talking to? What am I on about? Anyway, in the garment, there was loads of um, ease. So I went down to a size L. Now, this fabric was a dream to cut out, is all I'm going to say. And there's not many pattern pieces. There's a front, a back, a neckline, and then it's finished off with facings, which is a little bit unusual for a knit project, but I loved that. So if you can see under here, it's actually, because it's black, the back of this. Can you see? It's actually finished with a facing. So what you do is you... Um, pop your facing on, right sides together, under stitch it to keep the seam um, in place, flip it over and then top stitch it. And I um, didn't actually have a Mariflex thread that worked with this fabric. So um, I actually, well I did, I had a pale pink one which you can see on the inside but I didn't quite like the look of it on the darker pink. So I used just a normal thread with a longer stitch and it's that's my kids playing because I told them to be quiet <laughs> um yes and I used that because it it doesn't need a lot of stretch to get my arm through and um the only thing about it is and I think the picture shows this as well is this is quite floppy I mean I I like it it's actually a bit too big to kind of be up here look like a turtle um so I quite like the fact that it does that but yeah and then it swings out and I just love it there's two different versions there's a cropped version and there's a longer version I went for the cropped version because I don't like things too long and I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to um, extend it because I didn't have enough fabric to extend it but I popped the pattern pieces up against me I quite like a cropped jumper and actually it's worked out quite well let me stand up well you'll be able to see in the photos anyway but it comes to here but can you see how it swings out and this has got a facing on it as well um so yeah i loved it i went down one size super comfy perfect fit the arm length is really good as well i mean it looks a little bit short now i've put my arm up like this but when my arms are down <laughs> oh it's actually a perfect length which is unusual for me i normally have to extend the arms but i didn't this time so yeah really quick so really quick to cut out fantastic and I will 100% be making more of these you want to try and make it in a bit of a stable knit so you don't really want well, you probably could get away with a drapey fabric but I think it probably sits better on the body if it's like a, a ponte or a double knit or something with a little bit of structure anyway but how amazing is this fabric from Andrea I'm so glad I got some Andrea did actually message me and say when this fabric first came in I've got the most perfect fabric for you. Will you let me gift you some? And I said, no, you're never going to make your millions if you gift things to people. And then I saw the fabric and I was like, why? Why did I say no? <laughs> but I bought myself some anyway because I couldn't resist it. So yeah, very happy with this make, which is my most recent make that I made on Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm not just saying that randomly. Did anybody watch the uh, comedian Miranda, her programme? She used to say it like that. It's not just me being random. Tuesday. Right, anyway. Then, I think a few people might have talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it as well. So, as part of my little gang with the Northern Soul Sisters, um, you will have seen that we went on a little trip to Birmingham. If you haven't watched that video, um, we do have a video over on our Northern Soul Sisters YouTube um, just with a little bit of kind of taking you with us on our weekend away. We had the most wonderful time. We met up with Angela from Devon Thread Tales and Helen from Stitch Rip Repeat and we all stayed over in an apartment we'd booked and it was amazing. Um, we had our live as well while we were over there but before that we'd all decided to make pyjamas so that when we were just chilling out on an evening um, having a chat and everything we could be really nice and comfy and it wasn't really like a collab or anything it was just a shall we do this kind of thing so we all made 
similar pyjamas with one of the fabrics being identical and then one of the fabrics all being a different colour. So if you saw us on the live, you'd have probably seen that. But these are our pyjamas. These are the pyjamas that I made. Jack! Shut it! Sorry! Anyway, moving on. Won't edit that out. Um, yeah, so we all made bottoms in this fabric and then we all had a different coloured top. So we got the fabric from First of Fabrics. Um, Tamlin sorted all that out for us. And these are my pyjama bottoms. Oh, I love them so much. <laughs> They're the comfiest pair of pyjamas ever. I know I said that about my double gauze pyjamas, but I think these have taken over, particularly for the winter. So this is like a brushed cotton um, fabric. It's in like a black and a cream, and it's amazing. So let me find my details on this one as well. So the pattern that I made, where's it gone? Where is it? There it is. Is this one now you'll see the amount of times i've made this because the the envelope is just a bit knackered <laughs> look at the state of it <laughs> that's how many times i've had it in and out of its packaging but this is the pattern that i used and it's the loungewear um set by peppermint magazine so it's a free pattern or a give as much as you can pattern and it's designed by common stitch now i just use the bottoms for this and the reason i use that pattern is because because i know there's loads of other pj patterns out there but i've made this loads of times and i know it fits so i was like that'll do so i made these ones here now this goes from sizes a to k yes a to k on the back of here and again i'll put um down below what those actually mean um i should be a h on the waist and a g on the hips but because the waist gets cinched in by elastic i just went with a straight g and it fits perfectly i wanted them to have a little bit of movement in them because obviously i wanted them to be loungewear but they're really lovely because they just have a i finished them off with a little label in here look oh that's a bit wonky oh no there we are eat sleep so which i thought was appropriate and i've put that on my little top as well they're just super easy these because all you're doing is basically putting the elastic in folding it over and sewing it down you can sew a channel in there if you want and then feed your elastic through but you don't need to really simple construction really lovely little pockets here look so there's the little pockets you know to put random snacks in when you're coming from the kitchen to the living room when you're chilling out um i extended these as well in length now they're supposed to be a cropped length but i wanted a long length however we bought two meters of fabric thinking that'll be enough but they're quite wide legged pants so when myself and rachel because we were making the same pattern lay our pattern pieces on we were like oh oops <laughs> oops a daisy we've only got two meters but i think it might have been tamlin that said have you thought about putting your pattern pieces on the cross grain because obviously it doesn't really matter with this checked fabric so i did and i just had enough i mean i had the selvage was in the seam allowance on the bottom if you know what i mean but it was perfect and they fit perfectly perfect length well happy with them put it that way and then is there anything else to say about that don't think so nothing exciting about that one and then we all made the same pattern for our top so let me get my top out now and this is the jackson tea looks creased but i have i promise i've ironed it um and look at this color so this is a cotton jersey from first of fabrics and i have to say it's probably one of the best quality jerseys i've worked with it is gorgeous it's stable but loads and loads of stretch with really good recovery i've washed this lots and it's come out identical but look at that color i mean it's just gorgeous so yeah we all had different colored tops and again, I use the rainbow um, overlocker thread in that and I've got the same um, tag in there as I did for my bottoms. So this is the pattern here. It's a unisex pattern, which is fabulous. And you can make it in either a t-shirt or they call it like a pullover. Um, and there are a few different options, actually. So these are the options here, if you can see. So there's a short one, a long one, a long sleeved cropped version and a 
um, long sleeve longer version and they've also just released an extension or expansion pack which was uh, which has a hood as well on it so you can make it into a hoodie so really versatile this pattern I think you're getting a lot for your money on this one if I'm honest and I know it's one of Tamlin's absolute favorite patterns and now I want to make it into a pullover as you call it I think is that is that American that you call pullover we call it a jumper um, so yeah, I want to make this. It goes from sizes zero to 34, that is US sizes. But yeah, loads and loads of options. It's drafted for five foot six. Now I'm five foot eight. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for the longer version because a couple of inches, I'm taller than a couple of inches anyway, the crop version might be too short, but when I actually made the t-shirt, it is mega long, um, which you'll see on the pictures. So I think next time I would probably make the cropped version. Now, I was across sizes as well on this. I should have been a 16 on the bust, a 20 on the waist and an 18 on the hips. But I just made a straight size 18. So that was um, a bit oversized in some areas and a bit undersized in um, others. Um, but I wanted it really big and baggy because I was wearing it to bed. I didn't want a tight T-shirt. Now, the shape and everything's lovely on it. But again, it's oversized, which is what I wanted. And it does say in the instructions, if you want a closer fit to go down a size, if you want to do an oversized, do one or two sizes bigger. Um, so that's what I chose. But I'm already looking forward to kind of maybe downsizing to make it to a closer fit for if I want to wear it out and about, because that is just for my pajamas. But yeah, really pleased with it. I finished it off with a very um, pale pink Mariflex because I had that and I thought you know what it kind of contrasts a little bit I quite liked it, it didn't bother me so there's the hem and of it the sleeve hem and everything but yeah um just love it what more is there to say just just loves it I does so there's my pajamas <laughs> check me out right what else we got what else we got oh I know what we'll talk about we will talk about let me see if I've got it in my file sounds very technical uh, but it isn't. Uh, I'm sure I've written it in here somewhere. Bear with. Bear with. It's another one from Miranda. Bear with. Here we are. Here we are. Right, let me find my thing. Where's my thing? <laughs> hey, let me get this out. The next thing is another Tasuti pattern, and that is the Berlin jacket. Now, I've crushed over this for quite some time, and I don't know if you can remember, but this is what it looks like on the drawing. Um, when I went to the knitting and stitching show in Harrogate with my mama, um, I had already bought this pattern and I really had my eye on it, but I knew that it took, it says one and a half metres of boiled wool, but I don't think I could have got it out of one and a half. I had two metres just to be on the safe side and that was perfect. I did have a bit left over. Um, but I didn't make any adjustments to the pattern and I only just kind of, it was just over one and a half. But here is said item. Ooh, look at all these colours. They kind of go well together, don't they, that I've been uh, sewing everything up in. But when I went to the knitting and stitching show, I'm digressing already, with my mum, she said, well, how about I buy you a Christmas present and buy you some boiled wool for this pattern? Because I've been going on about it a lot. And it's expensive, isn't it, boiled wool? Don't know if anybody else knows that out there, but hello, it's really expensive. Um, but I really wanted to make this. So she bought me two metres of this stunning, stunning fabric. Look at the cat ears. Don't look at that bit, don't look at that bit. Oh, there's probably one on this side as well. <laughs> I live with two white cats, it's a nightmare. But yes, yeah, so this, look at this colour. It's like a rich, dark, raspberry, purpley colour. I just love it. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to see some pictures that I hopefully take tomorrow and pop into this video. So I bought that fabric from, um, I think it was Sew Me Something at the um, Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show. And they had about four or five different colours and it was really hard to decide. But I wanted that kind of for autumn time and with all the different colours that I was making um, my patterns and garments in, I thought that would go really nicely. I was tempted to go with a plain black, but I didn't in the end. So let's have a look. So I should have basically been um, an XL in this pattern. Again, sizing, let me have a look. It goes from an XXS to an XL. Um, again, not the biggest size range, but there is lots of movement in this. 
but I didn't size down because I wanted it to be really big to go over jumpers and all sorts of stuff. So the pattern for the waist size, my waist is actually bigger than the largest size on this. Um, what's it trying to tell me? Mm. But I made an XL all over. I probably could size down to a, an L or even a, a medium, if I'm honest. But I wanted, I didn't want to mess it up because that fabric was expensive. It was a fab pattern to cut out, I think, because the boiled wool was just so easy. A bit like this, it was stable. So to cut it out was just a dream. And actually, considering there's not that many pieces because it's not lined, so for a jacket, it's quite good because you're not having to line it all. So there's not all that extra work. So I kind of went into it thinking it was going to be an extensive make and it wasn't at all. It literally whipped up in no time. So I would definitely recommend it to people. And because it's quite oversized, big and baggy, you don't need to worry about fitting issues or anything like that. <laughs> so I did try my walking foot with this fabric, but for some reason it didn't like it. Now... Am I supposed to put my dog tooth down when I put a walking foot in? I need to look at that. But anyway, it just did not like it at all. But I thought I was being really clever by trying to do that. But I went back to just using my good old Juki. She's here. Um, and do you know what? Um, absolutely no bother getting that fabric through the machine. Even when I was doing the pockets, which were quite a few different um, layers, just had no issue whatsoever. I know. Uh, what else? Oh, so... This is finished with facings as well, but the construction is so interesting. You're kind of doing it and you're thinking, is this wrong? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. But you have to trust the process. But basically, can you see here? You can see, oh, how many cat hairs? Seriously. It won't come off now. It's like embedded. It's like, that. no, I'm not coming out. Um, can you see here? Look, it's got like open seams almost. It feels like it's an open seam. But it actually isn't. It's very, very clever. But all down the arms, all here on the joins. It's just absolutely amazing. But what you do is you basically, oh, let me pop that over there, overlap the two seams very slightly and then sew in the middle of the two seams and it creates that look. Very clever, but very simple. But you could show off and pretend that it's a really interesting skill but anybody could do it it's that good um so i was really surprised actually and then it's finished off with facings as well to make the edges neat but obviously you need to use boiled wool or something like that that doesn't fray because you do have raw seams so you just have to be a little bit careful when you're cutting your pattern out as well that you're not all wonky and i think that's good that's where a rotary cutter a rotary cutter comes in handy um, because you can get a really nice slick line when you're cutting with a rotary cutter. Sometimes when you're doing it with the scissors, you can end up with slightly um, jagged edges. So I just cut it out with my rotary cutter and I absolutely loved it. What do we think? I'm kind of liking my outerwear at the moment. But yeah, there's not much else to say about it. It looks like a complex make and it ain't at all. So definitely do it and then show off about it like me. Although I am telling you that it's actually an easy make, but never mind. Right, I'm going to talk about just one more make. I have got more to go through, but that'll have to be in part two. Let me see if I can find out it. Ha ha! Okay, so the next one is this. It is the Nomi dress by Sew so Over It. Now, I really liked this pattern when it first came out, and I very nearly bought it. But resisted because I was, had loads of other plans. But when I saw that this was coming free with Simply Sewing magazine a while ago, I ran <laughs> to the shop and got it. Because for the price of the magazine, say it's £10, well, if you're going to have this in plus all the other things, then you're kind of getting a bit of a bargain. So this dress comes in a few different versions, as you can see here. So it's this really mega long version, shorter version, and then it's got two necklines. So like a t-shirt, scoop neck, and then this one's got like, um, I think it's got like a little bit of a twist. Yeah, twisted knot in the middle. So there's two different versions in this as well. So I suppose you can make four versions. The shorter version with the crew knit and the longer one and then vice versa as well. But very happy with the sizing on this as well. Um, sizes 6 to 30 in UK sizes, which is great. And the pattern is done in two blocks of 6 to 20 and 18 to 30 and I'm assuming that's because they've used different bodice blocks 
for the different sizes, which is fantastic. So there's a couple of sizes that overlap. But yeah, really good size inclusive. It does mean that you have to trace the pattern pieces out, but I was all right with that because I was getting a free pattern. I was like, why not? So yeah, really, really happy with this one. Now I came out on this one as an 18 on top and 20 on the waist and hips. Um, I know some people get hung up about sizes. Let's just talk about that now. Now I'm a 16, I'm probably 14, 16 on top and a 16 on the bottom. Well, probably a little bit bigger than a 16, but I'm trying to squeeze in them. You know what I'm saying? So I think when people see their sizes on um, pattern packaging, People can get a little bit upset by that, and I understand that at all. But you know what? Let's just embrace it. We ain't a number, so it doesn't matter if it says I'm an 18, 20. Who cares? As long as it fits me, I'm not bothered. And there's no sizes, is there, in our own me maids? And there's no little label that gives us a, you know, surprise every time we look at it and it doesn't say what we want it to say. So I made a size 20 all over. So I was an 18 on the top, 20 waist, 20 hips. I made a 20 all over because I thought, do you know what? It's really stretchy. It's got negative ease in the pattern. So let's not worry about it. And here it is. Here is my mate. It's my Bet Lynch make. That's what I call it. So this is a viscose jersey that I got from First for Fabrics. There's a lot of First for Fabrics uh, fabric in this one. But yeah, it's this outrageous black, grey, white animal patchy print I don't even know what to call it it's kind of got some roses in it I don't know I just call it my Bet Lynch fabric and I love it it's very very lightweight um so it would be nice in the summer if you want to do a short version of this as well um but yeah it's got two tiers on it because I did the long version um but when I made it up it was super big on my bust and waist it was just way oversized it ended up that I had complete bingo wings here. So it wasn't fitting me around the arm psych at all. <laughs> um, this will be interesting when I'm trying to find a thumbnail later. Um, so I had to take it in a lot, and I mean a lot. I, I haven't written down how much it was because I was trying to do it last minute so that I could wear it when I went to Birmingham. But I think if I was to do this dress again, I would size down twice on the bodice pieces because yeah, like I say, it wasn't meant to be that big. But hey ho now it was again relatively easy so um it's just the gathering because obviously you've got two lots of gathering to do because you've got two tiers to your dress when you're working with viscose jersey it ain't the easiest oh god viscose jersey i love it but it's so slippery um but i did it it wasn't a problem but yeah gathering and then stitching etc was a bit of hard work with the viscose jersey but i just took it slow and just went with it the sleeves, I went a little bit shorter because I have no idea how, but when I came to hem the sleeves, I had a hole here and a hole here. So it was obviously something I'd done when I cut the pattern pieces out, I think, but I just lobbed that bit off, hemmed it, and I'm quite happy with the length of the sleeves anyway, because I like a three quarter length sleeve. So yeah, I was all right with that. Um, there are, so there's a couple of changes I'd probably make if I was to make it again, one would be sizing down on the bodice and the other would be to raise where the first tier hits my waist. Now I think because the fabric's quite thin and because there's a lot of weight to this fabric because there's the two tiers and it's almost to the floor, the length, I think it's dragging the bodice down a little bit too much. So I think what I'd do next time is maybe take an inch, maybe an inch and a half off the bodice piece next time to bring that line in with my natural waist because it's kind of sitting a bit lower where my waist is even thicker so it doesn't look as nice on me so that's definitely something I'd do um, different next time and the other thing is okay I'm going on about it again but I'm five foot eight and this hits the floor <laughs> like when I put it on I was like have I done something wrong here because I haven't extended it but it's really long so for you shorties out there just take that into consideration. You probably won't need the amount of fabric it tells you because if it's floor length on me, you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't know if I'm used to a dress being that long. I'm still debating whether I'm gonna cut it off to midi level. I think I might feel better with that, but I'm not too sure. And the other thing is I actually did the neckline differently. So what you're supposed to do is attach your neckband and then turn it over and then top stitch along here. But I actually quite like this thin neckband as it is. 
so I just went with that and left it instead of turning it over and then stitching it along here. I think it gives a really nice neat finish here. It's quite narrow but hey and then I popped a little label in and it says where is it oh it says finish just in time and I was literally making that up the day before we went to Birmingham in the night time before we went I was like trying to hem it and everything but yeah so that's my learnings from that one but yeah great pattern and I would definitely make it again I just need to make some adjustments to it what do we think what's your favorite garment out of all of that then I, I oh mm, I'm trying to think of what mine is I think it's this I think it's my hazelwood I just love it maybe it's just a fabric I don't know I just love how it swings out it makes me feel nice and really comfy and then I can eat a big tea <laughs> you can't tell because it's hidden underneath <laughs> anyway I'm going to stop there I have got I keep looking over there because I've hung all my makes up I have got quite a few other makes as well but I'm gonna cover those off in another video but can I just say if you have liked this video please do give it one of them what happens is if you give it one of them and you comment below, it starts shooting me out to loads of other people. So that'd be great if you could. Um, but I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's had lots of time to sew and I'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.